Uh, Ulas has been with the Magma team since late 2019, and he's one of the lead code maintainers for the project. And he serves as the area lead for the 4G and 5G services running on Magma. Uh, prior to Facebook, joining Facebook and the team, he worked in a career across leading industry R&D labs on next generation wireless networks, distributed systems, content delivery, and network optimization. And I can tell you and the community, ULAS is always a joy to work with. So uh, please, without further ado, join me in welcoming ULAS. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Phil, for the very nice introduction. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, Your slides look great, ULAS. All right. Let's start. Um, so uh, I have been with the Magma project over a year now, and I should say uh, it was it is really quite exciting uh, to be part of the Magma development team. Um, it is exciting because Magma has a lot of prospects in terms of uh, disrupting and transforming how we provide uh, a converged wireless connectivity to masses. Uh, it is very exciting because of the growing, solidly growing uh, ecosystem partners who are invested uh, in its success. Um, but it is also very particularly very exciting for the uh, software development community. Uh, because of Magma's unique engineering approach in terms of how we uh, try to solve the very hard problem of uh, providing a low cost, high performance, highly available core networking fabric for the wireless edge. And while doing that, make it quite accessible for software developers so that they can take it and easily extend it uh, for different scenarios and use cases. Um, and in my talk, uh, I will basically try to basically convey uh, what uh, type of uh, unique approaches we follow, uh, what uh, guides us in our day-to-day -day engineering uh, decisions uh, and roadmap discussions. Uh, with that, uh, let me, uh, you know, uh, talk about, you know, what the content of the presentation is. Uh, it is divided in three parts. In the first part, I will spend a good amount of time talking about abstractions. Uh, this is not a, a general talk about abstractions. There are uh, very nice materials out there. Uh, particularly, uh, I recommend, recommend people to watch uh, Scott Schenker's uh, talk about uh, network, networking abstractions. Uh, but I want to basically approach this problem from the vantage point of uh, abstractions for converge access. And I will also provide a, maybe a critical look at uh, how 3GPP, uh, you know, uh, failed maybe to deliver uh, on this, uh, on providing proper abstractions. And in the second part of my talk, I will uh, go into more Magma specific, uh, uh, you know, uh, architecture decisions and uh, abstractions. And I will wrap up uh, my talk uh, by shedding some light in terms of uh, how uh, we can evolve uh, Magma further uh, so that as more and more partners are joining and more and more uh, scenarios or use cases, uh, we seek for uh, how we can uh, continue scale uh, our architecture. Uh, and I will also conclude with two uh, key takeaways from my talk as the final remark. Uh, so let's start with the abstractions. If you look at a technical definition of abstraction, uh, it is really the process of removing physical details or attributes in the study of objects or systems to focus attention on details of greater importance. If, I, if you may, I mean, you can remove the physical details here and substitute it with low level details. The reason why we wanna focus on high level details is to trade off complexity with simplicity so that people uh, can easily make decisions on how to scale their system, how to manage their system and how to extend it uh, with new services. But, the definition maybe is easy or straightforward, uh, but when we look at reality, we see that abstractions are really hard to deliver. Uh, in a lot of systems, actually, we see that engineers or uh, product uh, owners, they err on the side of complexity rather than providing simplicity. 
often we end up with leaky abstractions. We see this tendency towards over, over optimization across layers. We see information data, low level attributes moving uh, between layers, between services uh, that uh, they shouldn't be aware of uh, those low level details. Uh, a lot of times uh, we trade off performance benefits or short term development velocity over the long term targets of system scalability, modularity and reusability. Uh, another uh, pitfall, uh, you know, engineers uh, fall into is they try to provide uh, a lot of features with a lot of knobs to play with, uh, and we end up with these fat abstractions. But in reality, very few of these features are frequently used, and a special mastery is needed uh, if one wants to use most of these features. The third issue with abstractions is uh, in, in many times we end up with requiring domain knowledge. And uh, this is particularly true for the 3GPP related uh, system solutions. Uh, we notice basically with our experience with a lot of partners, 3GPP is particularly overwhelming for new developers. Uh, and it has a lack of usability across domains when you change your scenarios. Uh, again, you need to have a lot of deep knowledge into the stack uh, and so that you can basically uh, write the uh, right adaptation uh, layers basically for that architecture. Or in some cases, it is actually a, a, you know impossible task even. Uh, to transfer one uh, domain application uh, to be used in another uh, application. And test of time, uh, you know, can my abstraction survive multiple generations of technology? Unfortunately, in, for many systems, uh, you know, we develop over the, for the wireless over the years, uh, they do not. They do not basically uh, pass this first test, uh, like the uh, counterparts like TCP IP layering or HTTP that survived over uh, many decades now. So when we do not deliver the right set of abstractions, Converge Core looks something like this. Basically what we end up with is uh, orthogonal stacks of technologies that don't have any, uh, you know, uh, you know, shared functionality or services with each other. Uh, the packets processed by one stack is completely unaware of the other stack. This is the ships passing in the night type of model. And this, I mean, although we say converge core here, as you can see, it is there is nothing converge here. It is just a bundling of multiple stacks in the same box. When we talk about Converge Core with abstractions, this is really the picture in our head. And this is the guiding principle how we evolve uh, the Magma software. As you can see uh, on the bottom part, on the south band interface from Converge Core to the specific radio access networks, we see uh, a unified programmable data path. Uh, so each of these RANs connect to the same data path. And we also see an access network control path normalization. So we try to terminate radio specific, radio technology specific exchanges interfacing as early as possible in the core net, in this converged core architecture. And on the top of these two, uh, you know, normalization layers, we see our common services like access control, IP address management, session control, data path control. And if we, when we look at the northbound interface, we see also another layer of normalization against the OSS, PSS systems. Regardless of how, how the policies, subscribers, virtual network or slice definitions, uh, the configurations or how the metrics and events are consumed by these OSS, PSS layers, we try to normalize on that so that uh, the Converge Core actually has the same uh, set of services that can be reused uh, again and again while we are integrating with different OSS and BSS systems. 
Now, let me go back to uh, 3GPP uh, non-abstractions, and I will just provide a few examples here. First problem with the 3GPP is there is an inflation of identifiers. I will not go through this list because it is a long one, but you know, as for, if for each generation, we have this inflation of identifiers and what is worse from generation to generation, although the purpose of almost all these identifiers remain the same, they keep changing the names. The second issue with 3GPP is there is gen a lot of generation specific procedures, message names and information elements. Now contrast this against the simplicity of GRPC or Thrift that provides a lot of extensibility and new innovative ways of uh, doing things, but yet they provide generational backward compatibility out of the box. The third issue is functions and interfaces rather than services. Yes, 5G is a big lift up, but when you look at the interaction between the RAN and the core network, uh, S1 interface, N2, and one interface, as well as the COPS model, you know, if you look at the, how the SMF and UPF interaction is happening, you see that there is a lot of still interface oriented approach rather than a service based approach, and they still need a lot of a lot more work. The fourth is the policy rules, a lot of red uh, radio access technology specific policy rules uh, leak through those uh, policies. Uh, rather than following a more generic intent-based policies approach. There are also some abstractions like bearers and APNs. Uh, at the you know, surface of it, they look like reasonable, but when you dig, you know, uh, dig deeper, you see that again, they leak through all, all across many, many functions and they overload basically. For example, bearers are there for both QoS management and path management in 4G. Uh, while APN is used for packet gateway selection and QoS policy as well. Now let's jump into the Magma architecture and its abstractions. Let's start with the architecture. When you look at the Magma Converge core, there are three different layers or components that, that are immediately visible. At the bottom, we have access gateway, which provides a highly scalable and distributed core that is edge ready. So when you connect a radio access uh, node uh, to our access gateway, you can have uh, straight access, uh, local breakout to the internet or local edge cloud. When you go uh, top of the hierarchy, we have the orchestrator uh, that provides uh, RESTful APIs to the OSS BSS layers. Uh, and that also provides a network uh, management system, NMS, to provide the uh, user-friendly interface uh, to consume data, to visualize what is happening uh, on the network at the access gateway for subscribers and to configure uh, you know, uh, these uh, functionalities and provide lifecycle management. The third box is the, uh, or functionality is the federation gateway, which is there to provide uh, access to the legacy systems where the mobile network operator might be providing like the PCRFs, HSS, OCS, et cetera. As you noticed, our, the distributed part of our arch architecture is really the access gateway part. The access gateway on its own is an abstraction. It provides us a, as a, as a small fault domain. Each of these access gateways uh, can be upgraded individually. You, we can have canary deployments where uh, different set of features or generations might be running uh, across these access gateways. And also very importantly, these access gateways don't need to be the same access gateway. They can be personalized deployments. Sometimes it is a distributed EPC LT specific. Sometimes it can be a carrier Wi-Fi based access gateway. Sometimes it can be a 5G core. Sometimes it is actually a combination of uh, multiple of these technologies. 
And as you may notice, this picture is like a leaf spine uh, network. Uh, where these uh, excess gateways are like your top of the rack switches, basically, but uh, they are standalone components. So if they fail, they don't impact any of the other, uh, you know, excess gateways. Uh, and uh, when you replace that particular excess gateway with a new one, uh, it just carries on, uh, you know, with no problems. The reason why it can do that brings us to next slide, basically, uh, how we uh, abstract the config time and runtime. When we look at the configuration or config time abstraction, we see that uh, there is a logically centralized orchestrator. Day zero and day one convicts, uh, configurations are managed through APIs uh, from this orchestrator, or it is delegated to uh, MNO specific legacy uh, applications through the federation gateway. Orchestrator has the authoritative durable configuration state for the entire system. So even if you lose access gateways, it doesn't matter. If you bring up a new one, it will sync up with the orchestrator uh, to get this authoritative state about subscribers and policies. And orchestrator also has the knowledge base. It's just like a social graph. Every entity in your network, uh, which might be a, a function, it may be a policy, it can be a subscriber, it can be the access gateway node itself. They are stored as entities and the relations with each other are stored as edges. So we have a big graph representation for this knowledge base uh, in the orchestrator. The runtime abstraction, on the other hand, stays with the access gateway side. State generating in the network due to the operation of the network uh, is there, and access gateway is the authority about that. That state, like the session state, the UE state, data path state, and other metrics, they are synced up to the orchestrator for further consumption. And these states, uh, the runtime states are functional the configuration state. So, uh, you know, uh, whenever a co new configuration comes in from the orchestrator, it will start uh, a, a new evolution path, basically, in terms of how these runtime states are changing. And as I already mentioned, uh, these states are transient. So it is okay if you lose one and bring up another node or offload to another node uh, in this system. Let's uh, go into a bit more detail here. When we look at the runtime abstractions, we see, uh, you know, on one side is we how we terminate the uh, radio communication or radio uh, access network specific communication on the, as, as the access layer. We see that the AAA function, MME function or AMF function that are relevant for Wi-Fi, LTE and 5G use cases, uh, they terminate uh, and normalize uh, this radio access specific uh, messaging or signaling. And they are transformed into uh, an e not B or access uh, point state, authorization state for the user equipment, connection state of the user equipment. They are stored as, uh, you know, normalized states. When we look at the session D side, where we do the session management, the UE session states and policies are stored again in a normalized form. And regardless of which OSS BSS systems are being used, they are managed in the same manner. When we look at the pipeline D, which provides our user plane connectivity, we maintain the forwarding state, we perform the policy enforcement, we take offloading decisions, and we manage the transport functionality. So at the end of the day, each of these services, uh, as we have seen in the previous slide, really is about deciding what type of states owned by whom and how they are managed. 
So this brings us to the next abstraction about state management. State is encapsulated such that at any time in the network, it has a single owner. And the distribution of that state across different services is acyclic. It is level triggered, which I will come back to in the next slide. And this, uh, these states are cached by the downstream services and they survive headless operations. For example, if your service management layer disappears for a time period, your user plane can still co continue to function. If orchestration or cloud services go away for some period of time, the access gateway survives and can continue its functionality. And the third aspect is the validation. Failures happen, they happen quite often. The important point is, can we reconcile our states between these services in a stable and robust manner? So our validation is about reconciling the mismatch levels with the state owner upon service restarts and or periodically and so that we make sure that all the states in the system are eventually consistent. Now let's go deeper on this aspect. I want to contrast edge triggered versus level triggered approaches. 3GPP systems and standards mostly follow this edge triggered approach, meaning an event happens that changes the state from one particular point to the next, a low point to high or high level point to low. And it basically triggers a one-off signal. So this change is propagated across different services and function. If you happen to lose that signal at any point, then the states they start diverging across different services and functions. And you need to somehow reconcile that. Contrast this against a level triggered approach where you don't actually communicate what has changed, but you communicate what is the authoritative state and where it should be. So, so the state owner communicates that to other services and the other services try to uh, obey that state and try to realize that state. And if they cannot, they report that back. This approach is continuous and it is robust against errors and noise. To uh, give another representation of that, I show basically here, again, these two approaches. Let's say you have a source uh, state who is the owner there, you know, and then you have a sync state, which is basically any other function that is interested in uh, a particular state owned by another service. In edge triggered approach, you may be sending the deltas like additions or deletions of policies, subscriber sessions, etc. And if any of those uh, messages being lost or the node fails and a burst of uh, signals are lost, then we end up with uh, a divergence in state. In the level triggered approach, on the other hand, you send the versions of different state and it, every state communication is self-contained. So even if there are partial losses or a burst of losses, it doesn't matter when the node recovers or the interface recovers, the source state gets synced up with the sync state, uh, you know, eventually with the correct value. Now, having uh, covered all these different abstractions, let me go back to the, this converge core promise, basically, uh, that uh, we made. When we look at the 4G and 5G converge core architecture, this exemplifies it very nicely. We don't build a new SMF, UPF, or AMF functionality from scratch. We reutilize the existing microservices on the Magma platform. For example, here, the 5G connection object is actually the same as the 4G connection object, except for few configuration parameters. 
The NJAP and 5G NAS functionality is there for normalization purposes so that we can uh, terminate N1 and N2 connections. And the session D and pipeline D, there is very little change or variation between 4G and 5G. For now, uh, the, for the development effort, some of the uh, features are, look like we, we have some additional functionality at those session D and pipeline D, but eventually they will also disappear and abstract it out. Now let's conclude uh, with the presentation with a couple of slides. As we move forward, as more partners are joining it, there are more use cases being pursued, more application scenarios being pursued. So how are we gonna basically manage the delivery of uh, our services uh, to new customers and new application scenarios? It really boils down to, again, the packaging of the right access gateway for that use case. So what we are envisioning is with containerization of the services and Kubernetes-based deployments, we can define different pod types that are specific to the application domain so that they can bring up the right set of containers and package them. And one can deploy different realizations, different personalizations of access gateway in different parts of the network. And the final thoughts, there are really two key takeaways from this presentation. First one is convert procedural transactions to state management and distribution problems. What that means is terminate 3GPP hash triggers and procedural call calls as early as possible, model edge transitions as state, and use modern distributed system tools to efficiently propagate those states, also known as levels. The second key takeaway is emphasize abstraction over complexity. Normalize the radio access technology specific features as early as possible. Prefer reuse and scalability over optimization. Prefer flattened data and message models over deeply nested ones, like the ones used in 3GPP. And also prefer extensibility over code rewriting. With that, I wanna thank you everyone. This is the end of my presentation.